We're thankful for God's blessing and God's word. I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm glad we're coming down to the end. I'm grateful that the Lord has ordained a time to put an end to this mess. Amen. Most of God's people and the world for that matter do not understand that this is a warfare. And the warfare has heated up. We're being attacked more than we ever have from without as well as from within. Amen. The government is cracking down. The nations are perplexed. Our leaders of the government are confused. That's without. Inside of the confounds or the construction of the quote church unquote we're living where Jude told us we would be before Jesus come. And we are warned to earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. I was on a meeting on fr in fr uh, Friday with the television station and everyone that has a broadcast on that station. And the latest attack on Jesus Christ is that they're the FCC has revoked the uh, privilege of uh, churches airing without closed caption. I made a statement at the end of that meeting to everyone that was present. I said, now, it's strange to me that ain't nobody closed captioning all this cussing and swearing on the TV and all this uh, violence and nobody's closed captioning that. But this is the latest attack on Jesus Christ. Needless to say, when I got through speaking what the old folk called my peace, they were dumbfounded and couldn't give an answer. We're being attacked more than we ever have. It was a time when the Satan was, he was subtle about what he, he was doing. Now it's wide open. I said a while back, it's been some years ago about this lesbian and homosexual, they call themselves homosexuals or gay, but what's gay about that which God has called perversion? But I said a while back that when that spirit comes, there are other spirits that come along behind it. That's just the door opener. Every nation, Rome is in the state that they are now. Once a superpower, a world dominant power but that spirit got in those folks amen I don't want to too much deal with the outside of the church I want to deal with the inside of the hierarchy of the church we we are in a time now where everything is being accepted they're cramming down our throat that amen praise God uh you know uh, if you're not political, politically correct and if you don't uh, comply, uh, we'll throw you out of the denomination. Amen. All we expect from you is to set and shut up and take what we give you. Amen. But you know, I, I, I noticed one thing before God saved me. I've always been one to go against the status quo before God saved me. God took that negative and made it a positive after he saved me not to believe everything that comes over a pulpit, not to follow every spirit that claims to be something for Jesus Christ, a prophet, an apostle, a pope, an evangelist, Amen. When we left you on yesterday, we was talking about trusting God. We'll keep it right there, amen, praise God, because in these last days, if your faith and trust is in a man, you are in deep trouble. Hallelujah. And I don't care how long you've been around the church. I don't care how many tongues you done spoken. in. I don't care how full of the Holy Ghost you've ever been. You are not exempt from the devil deceiving you. Being filled with the Holy Ghost 
is the chief thing. Following the Holy Ghost is the second chief thing. And I bear a record today that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost, but if you have your own mind, you can go against the Holy Ghost. With all of that conviction that he brings, you can still override that. A backslider is brought into bondage because they have rejected the truth that they once embraced to get saved. That's what a backslider is. Amen. And you don't have to leave the church house to be a backslider. Amen. No ma'am, no sir. The churches are full of them. Second Peter. The last message in this particular chapter, we went over half of this book, but we're not going now this morning but because of time. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to begin reading at verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government and in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, right here he's not talking about the government of the United States. Right here he's talking about the, the, the way God has ordained the rules and regulations God has ordained for his people to walk by. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, when he put the gifts in the church, one of those gifts is government. Amen. We don't live loose. Amen now, we don't live loose. And we're not our own boss, and we're not self-willed. We're governed by this and this alone. From the pulpit to the front row, from the high ups to the low downs, there's one rule. And I believe Paul, amen, praise God, was encouraged to teach Titus. And then Titus said, let us all walk by the same rule. Hallelujah. What are you saying, preacher? Nobody's above this right here. Amen. Nobody. And let me add this. Don't nobody win in this thing but God. Don't nobody have his way but God. Don't nobody get his own way but God. Amen. If we ever could nail that down, that's over half the battle. Then you can get your butt off the shoulders and get your feelings off your sleeve and just live by this word here. Amen. So that when ridicule come, when persecution come, you won't be one of those that easily weak at the knees and just bow to anything. Amen. Hallelujah. I wouldn't give two cents for a man that's got half of the alphabet behind his name. But haven't, have, don't have any conviction about living by this word. Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. The mouth of God. And we got a copy of what came out of his mouth. He preserved it down through the years. This is how I want you to live. This is what I left in your presence for you to live. So nobody has an excuse, huh? Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whomsoever thou art. Why? Because, amen, praise God. The word of God is not overseas that we may hire somebody to go over there and get it and bring it back to us. Neither is it in heaven that we should hire somebody to go up there to get it and bring it down to us. What did the word say? But the word is now thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. Why well, bless his name? Don't feel good going down, but it'll work a lot of junk out of you. This is put here to make us fit for heaven, right here. Now, if you get saved and die, that's another story. After you get saved, but if you God save you and, and praise God and deliver you from the, the clutches of sin, he expects you to stay out of sin. Amen, Amen now. Nah. And so, praise God, we read verse 10. But chief of them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, despise government, presumptions of they self-will, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, and you know this to be true. 
They poke in front of Jesus Christ on, on, on the television. They poke in front of Jesus Christ, amen, pray God, in the media. They poke in front of Jesus Christ and the saints. Amen. And we're told to be quiet and take it. It don't work like that. And praise God, anybody that got that kind of spirit to try to blend in and keep the peace, so to speak, then you're going to the pit. God got a rank and file of everybody going to the lake of fire. And the first one on the, on the, on the list is the coward, the fearful. The warfare has escalated. Hallelujah. You're going to get on one side or the other. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Churches are being filled with people without church in them. For the sake of numbers, you got, you got numbers, but praise God, after you draw them, you got the same thing the world got. If you use the world tactics to draw people, then you're going to get the same quality. And if any time you try to teach them right, they're not going to take it. And because we don't want to lose our membership, we will not teach or preach certain things. We don't want to offend nobody. Listen, if I'm going to hell, offend me. I got one soul. Give me a chance to fight for my soul. There is no victory in backing down. There is no victory in compromise. There is no victory, amen, praise God, when people got the place of God in your life. There is no victory. Amen. A short-lived peace for a time, for a season. And then, praise God, if the devil can get you to back off one thing, he's not going to stop there. He's going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until next thing you know, you're right out of God. Wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute, Pastor. You can't get out of God. I beg to differ. God is too lovable a God. Well, Judas went to hell. Who sent him now? He was a partaker of the ministry. They might not have wanted to hear it yesterday at the table. But praise God, I always go somewhere ready to preach. And when I started preaching on the end where we was, some took it and some didn't. Don't care. But what I made the statement is they've taken hell out the, out, out the equation. Amen now. That's why people are doing what they're doing in the church house. They've taken hell out of the equation. Let's talk about a God of love. Well, love put Jesus on that cross. Love killed him. For God so loved the world. He killed his son. You read something into the scripture. No, the Bible says in Isaiah that God has put him to grief when he made his soul an offering for our sin. You read, it's in your Bible, Isaiah 53, it's in there. Amen. They only carried out the sinners. God didn't come out of heaven to do it. Amen, praise the Lord. Just like Abraham, Abraham was a type. God, amen, didn't come out of, he out of heaven to instruct Abraham to kill his son. No, Abraham was the one that carried that out. Amen. Let's read. Verse 11, for whereas angels which are greater in power and might bringing out red and accusation against the Lord, before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not. Because if you understood, you get saved. You quit kicking against the saints. You quit making laws to go against God and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And ye, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes. And remember now, remember, he's talking about folks off in the church now. 
He's talking about folks off in the church trying to lead others astray. The enemy within has infiltrated our ranks and he's exerting himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell every one of y'all something. God did not put me as a, call me as a preacher to please nobody. Amen. The late TJ Nation said, praise God, I got a boss, man. And what I took away from that is, praise when you got a boss, you also own the clock. And praise God, in March of 1983, I clocked in and ain't nobody big enough to clock me out but him. Amen. And when he brings you something before your eyes, he said, you preach this and don't you preach nothing else. You never get folks to follow you preaching against sin. You ain't supposed to be following me no how. Amen. Amen. Let me say that one more time. You ain't supposed to be following me. Amen. I'm following Christ. And I'm pointing everybody to Jesus Christ. Why? He saves. He heals. He delivers. He set men free. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery and that not, cannot cease from sin, beguiled in unstable souls and heart they have exercised under covetous practice. Cursed children. Now, I will stay with that courage, but I ain't got time. Amen. Pray God. Lord will next Sunday will enlarge on that. But every time you turn around, we got some kind of this is your season. This is your time. Let me tell every one of y'all something. You ain't got no season if you ain't living by this Bible him. Amen now. Nah. If you live by this Bible, Jesus Christ say, amen, pray God, you don't need a season. Because I'm with you. The one that blesses you is with you and in you. Huh? Amen. And what did he say in John chapter, amen, pray God, huh? If you abide in me, in my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. Now that your needs being met right there. Every one of them. Every one of them. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask for what you will. So where's your season? Where's your time? No, the only time you got is to live by this Bible here and then there are things that come along with this Bible. They will not come except you live the word. You be saying, man, you live the word and the word brings things to us. Why? Because the giver of those things is God Almighty. And the Bible declares you can't please him without faith in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. But beguiling unstable souls. I, I hear 2 Timothy where Paul talks about silly women. I'm not picking on the women. I'm not picking on the women. But when a preacher can run through the women in the church while he's got a wife, we got a problem. Amen. amen. Now, when fornicators can sit in the pulpit, amen, don't nobody bother them. I got a problem. We got a problem. Hallelujah. When the hoochies, amen, praise God. And all this joy, everything you see in the world, you see off in God's house. Why? There's no conviction you be saying on. But the message is trust God. Because if you don't, you're going to be swayed to give in. Oh, I, you know. Next thing you know, that which has been appalling to you, you begin to accept it. Amen. We ain't got church mother like we used to have. Amen. And praise God, these backslidden pastors, that's, that's the mothers that we still got, they done set them down. You leave them women alone. Them my members. I said on yesterday, you think God was kill, been killing folks now. Just give it a little time. As this thing escalates, more people are going to be dying like flies. I'm talking about folks that have been exposed to the truth and praise God some kind of way the devil has beguiled them into thinking that God done changed his mind. And the Bible declared Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, forever, you believe me saying that? Huh? Malachi 3 and 6, I'm the Lord your God and I change not. Wait. Wait, if he changed it, he's going to have to send us down another Bible. But remember now, before this bunch came on the scene, this was hell before they got here. And it's going to be standing when they leave. You'll be saying, man, wait, wait. 
And this is going to be at the judgment bar of God. Let's read. Verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozah, who loved the wages of unri- the wages of unrighteousness, <laughs> but were rebuked for his iniquity. And watch God rebuke the fellows now. Watch, watch what God is doing now. Amen. He rebuking some of us now. We got sense of knowing. Finally, when they rebuke him and don't take take a hold, then next thing we know, somebody throwing dirt in your face. Why your soul is roasted in the pit. Amen. Let's read. But we rebuke of the dumb man, amen, for his iniquity, the dumb man speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of a prophet. Now, he was a prophet. An ungodly prophet, but he was a prophet nonetheless. Huh? These are wells without water. Clouds they, that carry within a, a tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak grace, swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. And you talking about, pray God, I don't see nothing wrong with it. But 1 John 2 talks about the way the devil gets to us is through the lust of our flesh, huh? The lust of our eyes and the pride of life. Trying to be something, trying to have something so people can look upon you as somebody. Huh? That's where we are now. This filth come out of, uh, amen, California, the preachers of L.A. Now they got the preachers of, amen, of Detroit. I mean, God, I mean, these devils are floating that junk, amen, pray God. And if I, amen, pray, if I had the authority over anybody that claimed to be a Christian, I would wipe that mess out of their mind. I never saw it. I'm only hearing about it. But from what they telling me, we got a problem. You see what I'm saying? And we was in a meeting on last year, praise God, and one of the prominent fellows in this church spoke at a meeting with all of the pastors and, and, and began to glorify them for us. I said, dear God, dear God, dear God, we're in trouble. When men who wants, who grew up in this thing looking on these devils, and I did say devil, with admiration. And then we read, amen, pray God, 2 second, second Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, there are those who compare themselves by themselves. Huh? I'm successful when I get it like T.D. Jakes or, or this fella in Houston that's preaching and teaching and writing books about you being a better you. How can you be a better you without Jesus Christ? And if you notice, the fella never mentions Jesus Christ. Love, you gotta love, you gotta love. The devil is a lie. The first sign of love is a person tell you the truth. Why? Because if you go into hell, the only way you're gonna be delivered from hell, somebody gotta tell you the truth. Huh? If you continue in the word, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. You'll be saved. You can't be free listening to lies. You can and you will not be free compromising the truth that you've already heard. Let's read. Verse 18, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allude through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Is that clear? Is that clear? You free? And somebody come along and tell you, you can't be saved. You ain't saved. You didn't go down in the right name. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I know you think I was going to get to it. I'm getting to it. Amen. Been going on for years. Splitting people, amen. Pray God. Notice they won't, they will never go to the Baptist folk with that mess. Huh? They, they get off in holiness, amen. Pray God. Start to split us. Why? To weaken the giant. To weaken the mighty man. So we got the slits and splits and everything. Talking about they going to heaven. The Bible don't teach that. Why? Because there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God in all. Through all, well, bless his name. And that one God is not confused. You may be saved, man. How? Huh? 1 Corinthians 12, 20, uh, 14, 33. God is not the author of confusion. And remember now, in the first chapter of this book here, Peter said that, the, amen, this word is of no private interpretation. 
Somebody say you can take the word and make it say what you, what, what you want to say. No, not to the saints you won't. No, sir. That's why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the one that rightly divided for us. And when that man says something wrong or that woman calls herself a prophet and says something wrong, the whole a red flags go. How many know what alarm is? Huh? A lot of us got it on our phones. Amen. Pray to God on our radio. Huh? That, and, 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 and. What does that mean? You leave that alone. John calls it an unction. We have an unction that we need no man to tell us right from wrong when we hear wrong. I say when we hear wrong. Why? Because that unction will say, uh-uh, no. Mm -mm. No, sir. Amen. Huh? Pass on over your head. Take your butt on down the road. I don't want to hear it. Amen. Sure enough now. You know what's wrong with us? We're trying to be polite to folks and stuff, right? I'm telling you, praise God. Anybody that's trying to destroy me any kind of way, amen, pray God. I'm going to rise like a lion, amen, pray God. And if we have to, we'll fight. Amen now. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, my soul is too important. And my Bible tells me to guard my heart with all diligence. Listen, once you get in here, you cannot, it's going to take the power of God to get it out. Jesus Christ didn't say take heed what you hear, but he said take heed how you hear too. Huh? For everything you hear, amen, prayer, you cannot unhear something. You, amen, you cannot unsee something. This is why we need to sanctify our eyes and our ears. Amen. Now, hallelujah. I believe it was Job said, I will put no wicked thing before my eyes. Neither will I know a maid. Why? Because, amen, pray God. And in Job's day, Job had it going on. Amen. And you know, if you got a little something, everybody wants your, the real wise place. Don't you see? Don't you see? Everybody want to take the place of your wife. Hey, look here, Job. Look what I got. Amen. Now, Hallelujah. The man had little enough sense, amen, pray God. He was too afraid of God to commit adultery. Why well, bless his name? Let's read. Hey, it's right anyhow. We may not get no further than this, but thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Let's read. Verse 19. While they promised them liberty. Now, I'm already free. How can you promise me to free me? Huh? Hey, Sister Collins, what you call it? Get stuck on stupid? Huh? You're stuck on stupid. See what I'm saying? I'm already free, and you telling me I ain't free. But you bound and trying to bring deliverance. Let's read. For while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of the slaves of corruption. Let's read. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into. Is he brought in? Huh? Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fat. In the liberty wherein Christ has made you free, you already free. Huh? And be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage, but of who a man is overcome. He is that man is brought into behind. I believe it's in Romans, the sixth chapter. He says that when we yield our members to unrighteousness, we become slaves to that. Even in Romans, God want us free. Why well, bless his name, huh? Yeah. Romans 6 and 18, being down, made free from sin, you become the servant of righteousness. You can't get become a servant of righteousness until you get free. Yeah. And it takes the blood of Jesus Christ to make you free. You'll be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read. For, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the, of the what? Of the what? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, the Lord and who? The Lord and who? And what? Notice, Brother Lester, he drops names. Buddha ain't in there. Allah ain't in there. Huh? Muhammad ain't in there. Why well, bless his name? Harry Christian ain't in there. The Jesus Miranda is not in there. Why well, bless his name? You know what's wrong? We know, but we don't know. That's why somebody can get us to change what we do know. That knowledge means an intimate relationship with him. Amen. Now, when you get to the point where he said in John 10, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. Huh? And then he, he had them Gentiles in there. Thank God. Amen. What the sheep I have which are not of this Jewish fold, them also I'm going to bring. And that should be one fold, one ship. Why well, bless his name? Now, how in the world can you get 15 or 16,000 different shepherds supposed to be 
leading God's church. When all of us supposed to be preaching the same thing. What is that that we supposed to be preaching? Jesus Christ and him crucified. He was crucified for your sin. You don't even say that. Not just for your sin, but for your freedom, you believe it. Say, man. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Let's read. For after they escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome. And the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Why? For it had been better for them. Now, he, you got, he got to be talking about folk backsliders. He got to be. You can't backslide and go to hell. We read something different here. And notice, this ain't Old Testament. This New Testament. Let's read. For, if, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Notice he didn't say ways. Notice now he did not say ways. No multiple ways to get to God. No, sir. No, ma'am. The way of righteousness has a name. His name is. For if they had, it had been better for him not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog turned to his own vomit. Again, a what? And the sow that was washed to a wallet in the mouth. All right, I got 20 minutes. Let's get down into the good. The, the, amen, pray God, because there ain't nobody getting away. Ain't nobody getting by. Everybody shall pay day. Everybody shall pay day. Everybody shall pay day. God got a time set where he's going to judge the secrets of man through Jesus Christ. And here it is. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostle of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, scoffers, walking after their own lust. And saying, where's the promise of his coming? You know folks poking fun of that now. That's why we're living like we're living. Amen. And we ain't looking for him to come. That was the edge of the real saints then. Amen. This, that's the difference between the bunch we got now. The saints were living to leave. The bunch we got now, they started talking about stay here. Money coming. Amen. I'm decreeing that God going to give me a new house. I'm decreeing that God going to give me a new car. But you ain't faithful with what you got. Y'all don't scare me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're living in a time where just what Peter said in that second chapter. Amen. They're making merchandise. Why is it every time we get prayer, somebody wants some money? Why I got to give you a prove me often when you said God told you to pray in a certain manner? Huh? And after I get through praying, pray God said, now you got to prove God now. You got to prove God. If this is your season, you believe your season, bring me $20. Amen. The, the world had a saying, baby, more money, more money. I don't know where they got that from. I'm more money, more money, more money. Amen now. Praise the Lord. But notice scoffers. Huh? Walking after their own lust and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For as the father... Since the father fell asleep, the things continue as they were from the beginning. You lying, you lying. Amen. Now, things ain't going the way they was going back then. Now, amen, we're living in a new day now. That new thing's coming on the face of this earth. Why bless his name? But you got sidetracked. The devil got you looking, amen, by trying to stay here. Jesus ain't coming. Get some, stay here, be some, stay here. Let's read. For well, this they willing or ignorant, a willing ignorant, ain't that, ain't that a mess? That the word of God, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the word that then was in the days of Noah, being overflowed with water, perished. 
But the heavens and the earth which are now, wait, wait. The heavens ain't talking about what God is now. That's talking about this firmament up above us. Y'all with me this morning? Not just this firmament, but the stars, the, the, the quasar, all of that, the unit, huh? The, amen now. The heavens above us and the earth, which are now, but the same, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto what? Reserved unto what? Against the day of judgment. Notice there's a day of judgment. A day of judgment. Let's read. A petition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning the promise that some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. But thank God. He didn't come before 1983. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know when you got saved, but I got saved in March 19. Thank God it didn't come before then. Amen. Thank God for long suffering. Amen. Let's read. The Lord, amen. But his long suffering, he is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, when's the last time you heard anybody talk about repentance? Talk to me. I asked the lady sitting at the table with us just as when the last time you heard about hell? When the last time you heard anybody talking about hell and repentance? I can't remember. I said, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Amen. That kind of preaching offends folks. It turns folks off. You can't get nobody saved by preaching against their sin. I tell you what, they don't want to be saved then because they, the amen, praise God, all of the forerunners that came before me preached against sin. I love JB. I know he wasn't no punk. Amen. Nah. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When that bunch, amen, when, uh, Dr. Brown, they sent an entourage down there from the church. Huh? They sent the Pope them down there from the church want to know who he is. And before they could get one word out, John looked at him and said, wow, you vipers, you snakes. Who warned you to plead from the wrath to come? Boy, I'm telling you, pray God for amen, pray God. I believe after he said that, they took tail and went back where they, wow, he sent them packing. You be me sad man. He sent them packing. Hallelujah. Did he stop preaching where you be? No. Amen, now. Now, if he would have been one of the bunch we got now, you give me a few collar suits to replace this camel's hair, maybe I'll change the message. Give me a T-bone instead of these locusts, amen. Maybe I'll change the message. Come on here. We define ourselves by $500 shoes, $1,000 suits, $500 hats. While mama getting ready to set our doors, you see. Don't you turn the dial off. God trying to save you, preacher. Let's read. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come, huh? As a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And, the, and, and you know what that noise is? That ain't the rapture now. That's not the rapture. Now, when we leave him, we're going to hear a noise too. Amen. Only if you feel with the Holy Ghost. Y'all with me this morning? You can't hear it. His sheep know his voice and when he speak, we're going to answer. Amen now. But this time he's coming back with us. Jude said it. Amen. I saw the Lord. Amen. Amen. He, he quoted Enoch. He said, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, amen, pray God. He prophesied saying, I saw the Lord coming with 10,000 times 10,000 of his saints. Now you can't come with your saints until you first come for your saints. To judge the world of all the ungodly speeches, they are ungodly committed. Well, bless his name. Let's read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away and with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are ordained shall be burned up. Seeing then that these things shall be what? What manner of person ought you to be in all ALL, holy conversation, conduct, lifestyle, and godliness, looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, there as it is again, shall be dissolved. Let me stop long enough to say this. When this take place, ain't going to be no sun, ain't going to be no moon, ain't going to be no stars. So enough. When this take place, 
Notice, he, didn't, he ain't talking about the day, D-A-Y-S, as more than one. No, he's talking about the day of the Lord now. Don't you see? Let's read. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth. Where in dwell it what? Now, ain't nothing that defiled it, work of abomination going to be there. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, and that's what's wrong now. We ain't looking for this. Amen. We ain't scared enough. Right. Huh? I said we ain't scared enough. We off in the book of Romans now, Romans 3, where there's no fear of God before their eyes. We, we off in Romans 3 now. Amen now. Hallelujah. What well, men don't feel God, and because you don't feel God, you don't feel God because you don't believe in God. And pray God. There's some on the inside of you that's telling you that you are a God unto yourself. Therefore, it is your thing. You do what you want to do. But I tell you what, God going to talk it to some of us. Amen. I'm talking about church folks now. Now let's read. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay, what church is he coming for? Ephesians 5 and 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for the church that he may sanctify because he ain't going to have no holy bride. And cleanse it, he ain't going to have no nasty bride. By the washing of the water, by the word, then it should be, get somebody get that for me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Quickly, I, I'm, I'm going to put a in a paint now. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 25. Somebody get that for me. Read it. Read it. If you got to read it. Husband, love your wife. Even as Christ loved the church. Give me that one more time. Husband, love your wife. Read. Even as Christ also loved the church. Read. And gave himself for it. He gave himself for it. So we're supposed to be giving ourselves for <laughs> him and our wives. Read. That he may sanctify it and cleanse it. Read. With the washing of water by the word. Read. By the what? Washing of the water by John the word. John 15 and 3. We only clean through obeying the word. You may be saying, man, read. That he may present it to himself. Notice, ain't no preacher going to present the church to Jesus Christ. Why? I know how I want it. Yay. Hallelujah. I know how I want it. That's why I'm giving you the word now so you can get it up. You may be saying, man, read. A glorious church. A glorious church. Not having spot. Now, now what did we read here in 2 Peter? <laughs> What did we read? Huh? Verse 14, he talked about us being without a spot and blameless. Read. A wrinkle. A wrinkle. Or any such thing. Or any such thing that even come close to being wrong. Read. But that it should be holy. Now, I don't know. I, well, I do know all the folks that fight holiness is going. I know where you're going. You think holiness is a done. Holiness ain't no denomination. Holiness is God's standard of living. And because God has ordained, amen, 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16, but as he which has called us is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. He ordained the lifestyle of holiness. That means separation from the world, you believe me, say, man. Read. And with thy blemish. And it may be what? Holy. And with thy blemish. Read. 28. So ought the men to love their so wives. So ought men to love their wives, even. As their own bodies. As their own bodies. Because Christ loved the church. The church is his body. He's the head. He ain't got no two heads. Anything got two heads is a what? And this ain't no freak show. I said this ain't no freak show. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you another thing too. This ain't a, what they call a smuggish bug. You know, you lay it out. You take what you want. Leave the other alone. No, sir. Amen. We're in the same boat that he told John when he seen that angel had one foot on the land and one foot on the sea. He said, take that little book and eat it up. And when he ate it, praise God, he didn't eat part of it and leave the rest for later. No, sir. He ate the greens with the beans. Then God put him a little bit of that cherry cake off in now. He said, it'd be sweet to your mouth, but in your belly, it'll be better. Then he told him, pray God, after he ate that book, you got to prophesy in these last days. Okay, every time I preach from Revelation, John is prophesying. Every time I preach from this word, warning men about the coming of the Lord, get right. John is speaking. Why bless his name? You know that man ain't living now, not on this side. 
But that word is living. You believe me say amen. Oh, I got to quit.